Hi. <laughs> Hi, how you guys doing? All right, today I'm going to be talking about Dr. Sharon Stone. Who is Dr. Sharon Stone? Dr. Sharon Stone. Dr. Sharon likes to call herself doctor, even though I can't find anything that suggests she has a legitimate doctorate. I suspect it is not legitimate simply because so many within the prophetic movement call themselves doctor or are given the term doctor by others within the same movement. These are not legitimate degrees. These are not legitimately called doctors. Nevertheless, these doctors and these doctorates float around all over the place within the charismatic movement and you should not, if you have a good conscience, if you are ethical within our society, you should never call yourself doctor just to impress people. This is what con people do. Give themselves big titles that they don't have because we listen. And that is using something manipulative, using something dishonest for God's glory I don't think so. All right, Dr. Sharon had a bone disease growing up. OI, I like to call it, but it's something like osteogenesis imperfecta. All right, because of this bone disease, she had over 100 breaks of bones. She claims she does. But God healed her from OI. I looked up on the OI website and it's children get older. OI seems to disappear. In reality, they still have OI. However, the symptoms slowly go downward. So is this a miracle that she has or is this something very normal? Now, who is she? At 17 years old, she became a born again believer. Two years later, she's an intern pastor. She moves with her husband and kids to England and from England, she becomes Europe's prophet, a prophet to the nations. Bill Hammond, Dr. Bill Hammond, who has no doctorate, but calls himself Dr. Bill Hammond. Dr. Bill Hammond claims that she is one of the top three best prophetesses because she's the top three most accurate in her predicting. Hello, this is Dr. Sharon Stone, and I'm excited to be able to bring to you the 2021 prophetic word of the Lord. Now, and if you're not used to prophecy, let me just tell you this. In the Bible, in John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And so I want to start out by saying you are prophetic and you have the ability to hear God's voice for yourself. Actually, you are God's favorite person to talk to you about. And then in Amos 3, 7, God tells us that he has placed special voices in the earth. And he says, I do nothing without revealing my secrets or my mysteries to my prophets. Amos 3, 7 it talks about God doesn't ever do anything without mentioning to the prophets first. And they love this verse. God is going to be telling everything about the future. So they think they know everything about the future because God is telling them and they talk to each other and they listen to each other and they're building up all this teaching about the end because they believe that God is speaking through them and through each other, the prophetic movement, before he's going to do something. Amos was talking to a, a people who are going to be facing a dilemma, facing a tragedy that would put COVID-19 to shame. Uh, COVID-19 is nothing in comparison to what they're going to face. I don't care how bad you have it. They're, fa they're facing the, the fact that their nation is going to die completely. Wiped off the face of this earth, North Israel. And God's telling Israel, 
If you hear their lion roar, pay attention. If you hear the sirens go off in your cities, pay attention. Before something terrible like this happens, I sent my prophets. And Amos is warning them. He's saying, you are like a basket of summer fruit. You're ripe today. You're wealthy. Everything's going wonderfully. But it is on the verge of turning rotten and being tossed out. And then in First Chronicles 12, 32, he speaks about a special group of prophets, and he calls them the sons of Issachar. And these are prophets who had understanding of the times and the seasons and the strategies or solutions, what to do in those seasons. First Corinthians. First Chronicles. <laughs> I said First Corinthians. First Chronicles 12, 32. Uh, she says, a special group of prophets. God calls them Issachar. Um, I think this betrays how little she knows of the scripture and how much they focus on their favorite verses at the cost of so much more. And this is the tragedy among a lot of charismatic leaders. They do focus on certain passages in certain scripture, but they neglect so much that's so important. And in this particular case, Issachar is not a group of prophets. They're not prophetic. And God didn't call them Issachar. A woman married to Jacob hundreds of years previous called her son Issachar. And her son, and that was Leah, her son had children. And those children had children, and on and on down until they became a tribe. And the tribe of Issachar gathered around David. And that tribe was kind of special because they were good. They had wisdom. They seemed to understand a lot that was going on in their day and the times. From Issachar, this is what the Bible really says, from Issachar, from Issachar. The tribe, men who understood the times. There were, some of them understood the times and knew what Israel should do. 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. That's all it says. And then in Matthew 10, uh, 44, uh, Jesus says, He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. That scripture is more than to take a, a offering with. What it is saying is if you receive the revelation that is given by true prophets, then you're going to get to partner with it and you're going to be blessed by it. But also, it'll cause you to be rightly aligned and it will give you God's priority for the season that you're in. And that means that whatever his hand is touching is what your hand can touch. Whatever he is saying, you can be saying the same thing, praying the same thing. So we bless your ears to hear prophetically as I release this prophetic word uh, over you for 2021. Finally, Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. This is said in the context of uh, the disciples going out on a missionary journey. Jesus is teaching them, and they've been following Jesus, and he says, listen, you guys got some practice on your own. So go on out. Don't have any food or anything. Just go on out. And every house you go into, because you're going to be asking people to stay in houses, and they're going to be actually asking you to stay in their house, and if they welcome you and bless them, and if they reject you, wipe off your feet and move on. All right. But when they accept you, they will be accepting me. This does not say that we should follow these prophets in any way, shape, or form. These prophets are misled. 
They're following after their own hearts. They're following after their own thoughts. They create imaginary worlds for the future and for the present. They live in those imaginary world and really believe this is what's gonna be happening. But tragically, they are mistaken. And this is Ted, you have a good one. <laughs>